gon' step up for me Make sure my fans stay cause my daughter got it Hello everyone and thank you for coming back to my YouTube channel that is Deb Chanel's 48th World and I want to thank you for liking, sharing, and subscribing to my channel and to my videos. Thank you for always supporting my channel, coming by, dropping by, seeing what commentary I've, I've put out and to sit through the video uh, to see what I was talking about or referring to when I put my video out there with the title. But of course, you know, I promise you all, I was coming back trying to recap review on three of my housewives. Now, I definitely did Nene. I got Kenya taken care of, just finished Portia, and now I'm working on my last and final one, Candy Burris. Yes, and her over there taking up for Kenya Moore. And I'm trying to figure out what happened to the relationship. They were the three musketeers at the time. They were Kenya, Cynthia, and uh, Portia. Now it's Cynthia and Eva, and it's just Candy and uh, Kenya. And we got marriages just being, well, no, I take that back. We got one marriage being destroyed, and we got one who's just a mama baby. Or, yeah, a baby mama uh, scenario going on, hopefully, to be somebody's missus one day, Mrs. Dennis, Dennis McKinley. We're going to go on and talk about Candy. And this story, they're trying to make us understand that both of them now are bosom buddies and, and they're inseparable because they share one common factor, which is Mark. <laughs> and she's saying she ain't no pump, but she's sitting up there keeping her mouth closed because she like to get on women every chance she get. Yes, I'm talking about Candy and Mark and uh, Todd and um, Kenya. They supposed to be bosom buddies now from what Kenya is trying to relay to the public, uh, the people viewing the uh episodes of the Real Housewives of Atlanta. She's trying to say that her and Candy, Todd and Mark, they got a bun. Candy know all about their situation. She know all about Mark's behavior and demeanor. I'm like, wait a minute, I don't think that I saw come across my um television screen when I was looking at the episode last week she just said it was one time where she had to kind of get mark straight about can you change the diapers or, or change the diapers more often than he probably wanted her to but as we know men don't suffer from that unless they sweaty and they play a ball and they end up getting jock itch or they getting foot fungus you see what i'm saying because they don't keep the moisture under control. And with, with little babies such as um, maybe Brooklyn, her age group, all they need doing is pissing and boo-booing. Pissing and boo-booing. Pissing and boo-booing. And when they got that stuff stuck to them, they just like an alarm, a fire alarm going off. They don't want to feel it. They used to being dry. They don't want to feel that on them. So doing when the baby first come out, up to probably one year, until they kind of start eating solid foods, everything is just going to be liquefied. Is it going to just poop it out, eat it, poop it out, drink it, poop it out, poop it out, poop it out, and pee? That's, the, that's what they do, okay? That's why you use those cheap diapers when you're at home, but when you're out and about, you use those good diapers. See, that's what I taught myself from listening to other mothers. <laughs> okay? We skimp on those uh, heavy duty diapers when we at home and we know they pissing and, and, and how my mama saying shitting, pissing and shitting, uh, types of scenarios going on each day with the babies, okay? So, Mark, for him telling Kenya that piece of advice and Candy backing her up on that one isolated incident that they're letting us know about, it could have been more. Uh, but I'm just going by what they give me, and I'm making my own determination. I can think out the box here and there, but I just learned to just go with what a person is giving me, and I just use that as my train of thought, my rule of thumb, when I'm trying to make my own opinions. Okay, can I have that, y'all? I know I can. Thank you. Um, but anyway, for him to say that little piece made me think, well, damn, was he even in his other two kids' lives? where he was hands-on with the changing of the diapers, feeding, bathing, and all that good stuff. 
because his first wife should have got him straight. Or maybe she was clueless too and they were both new to this game of um, parenthood and trying to raise a child, a newborn at that. But then, you know, he has two kids, so I don't know if they were the same parent or he has two parents out there plus King. I'm not really sure. I'm kind of uh, confused on that front because I know he's supposed to have two kids, but I don't know if anything is out there on maybe from a girlfriend, one of the children, or both children by this other uh, wife he had, allegedly, a girlfriend, or however you want to put it. Okay, it's a, it, it's a lady out there that had two kids with him, or two ladies out there that had one kid with him, but he got two, plus little baby girl in Brooklyn. But to say this, to say that, uh, I'm just don't, I just don't know. But he is very flawed in that way of thinking that you're going to have a little tiny baby that can't clean off their cells. Or hell, when they even toddlers, they don't clean off their cells that good, especially when we come into the number two. Babies want to be fresh. We want to keep them from diaper rashes. We want to keep from them from infections. Soil diapers is a breeding ground for bacteria, infection, and all of that stuff. So we don't want the baby to have no diaper rash, no skin irritation rash, because trust me, you know when you uh, burn yourself accidentally or you're real moist down there from sweating or whatnot, it's a very uncomfortable feeling. Well, I'll give you one that you can ponder on. Uh, you know, when you go and do the number two and you're at work, or whatever, you think you don't clean yourself real well. But as you go along during the day, it seems like some kind of slimy back there. Yes, that's because you need soap and water to cleanse the um, the boo-boo off really clearly. It's not that you didn't uh, wipe yourself, wipe yourself until you didn't see anything. But it's just something about when you boo-boo and you don't really have like a cleaning cloth. Or, you know, you go to the bathroom and freshen up and get, you know, use some soap and water. After you boo-boo, it just don't have that clean, clean feel. Understand what I'm saying? But anyway, I just said to share that. I know it's too much information. Okay. So moving back on to my storyline on Miss Candy Burris and where we're going with all of this is I'm trying to find the hidden messages or hidden information that it seems like I have to sift through or assume, and I don't really like to assume that much, but just for, you know, taping purposes, we're going to assume that Kenya and uh, Candy behind the scenes have forged a good friendship. But she's trying to let us know that during this whole time where she's letting someone in her life and being exposed, exposed to Mark's uh, demeanor and his behavior while they're out in public with other people, She's trying to say Candy has witnessed this on more than one occasion. But from what I got from the episode, Candy was only talking about one isolated case, an incident dealing with a a, 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 a situation where Mark didn't feel Kenya needed to be changing the uh, diapers of baby Brooklyn that often. That's the only thing I'm getting. If somebody's perceiving it a little bit different, let me know. I know y'all will in the comments because I asked y'all to relate, relate, and release. Uh, anything that you want to say in your opinions about the subject matter that I put out on my platform, I give you all that. And y'all have been so respectful to me. I be respectful to you all, okay? <coughs> Excuse me. So I just have a few questions for Miss Candy, you know, before uh, we end this session. It's not too much. It shouldn't really be too long because I'm telling you, this lady moves in silence. She makes false moves. <laughs> in silence and I just had an epiphany when I was watching her one day and I was trying to figure out how I wanted to lay one of the stories out I was doing on her if y'all remember I'll take y'all a little back uh she had or she was upset about a, a position or uh a money making adventure that didn't go as well as she wanted to and she didn't get it for whatever reason and uh, but she's going to keep forging ahead. And, you know, it may not wasn't meant for her at that time when she was trying to get a lucrative deal doing something. You know, maybe she's, uh, you know, it's, it'll be seen somewhere down the road in her future. And I was thinking, did Candy try to get on the Stranson and, what is it, Stranson and Kelly? It's a Stranson and somebody show. Uh, I think his name Michael Stranson. He used to have a talk show with somebody else. But anyway, he's been trying to move up in the broadcasting world and stuff of that nature. So, But um, it's Kiki Palmer who's over there 
with the strands and I think it's Sarah and strands and somebody put it in comments if y'all know what I'm talking about. <clears throat> I know she, Candy was hosting over there with Kiki while the pregnant lady, Sarah, I think her name is, was going on maternity leave, but she was like on her, <clears throat> her last stretch of her pregnancy and they were trying to get, you know, people to come in and fill in and, you know, maybe it was an open slot coming up uh, in case Kiki Palmer really didn't work out. But uh, I know they had Candy over there a lot. And I was wondering, is that the business adventure that she thought she wanted to be a part of? But they chose Kiki instead to host uh, a co-host that show when Michael Stranzen is out sometime doing other uh, lucrative business deals and he can't be on his talk show and he uh, have guest stars come in. And I know uh, when he was gone, Kiki Palmer, Sarah, and Candy were hosting the show. So I'm wondering, <clears throat> was that it? Because I'm seeing her a lot, which I don't really quite understand why a lot of reality stars and celebrities have started YouTube channels and they're kind of taking it from, you know, the people that are trying to make it too in this business uh, or trying to make some good revenue from it by giving their opinions on trending topics or whatever their little niche is of what they call themselves professionalizing in and they want to let other people gravitate to them and they can teach them stuff. You know, some people's channel are very informative with uh, the women do-it-yourself ideas or get quick rich schemes they try to put you on to or, you know, just being it being a public speaking type of platform that helps you out maybe when you're out trying to close business deals if you're in real estate or if you're a head we call it let's say is it a head hunter or a head hunter no it's not something heck i can't think of it right now it, it, i'm losing it in my train of thought but it's like somebody um going and doing corporate business deals or dividing up companies and selling them off that kind of stuff teach you how to be a is it a head hunter or a head hunter i can't think but anyway it's not coming to me Neither here nor there, which I'm sure y'all get where I'm going with it. Uh, <clears throat> but anyway, I've seen Candy come over. She's starting or uh, started her YouTube channel. Uh, I think she got two. Uh, that and speak on it or speak your mind or something to that effect. And, you know, she of course she does Candy Code at nights and she has her bedroom candy that she goes out and promote through the states or counties or whatnot. Um, and make ambassadors of her uh, bedroom candy line where they can come self-sufficient entrepreneurs and sell under her and stuff. But I'm seeing her doing a lot of public speaking type of um, events. And with her becoming a spokesperson of her own brand, as well as her brand on herself, and other ventures she's gotten into to make her business outside of the Real Housewives of Atlanta. I've noticed that she is trying to up her game when it comes to being on the camera. And she's focused on talking about a particular subject. And she's trying to, you know, put her grammar in there. She's trying to uh, become more of a professional and just, you know, like coming on the tube and, you know, like me speaking my mind sometimes. Sometimes I can fool you all and get into my professional voice and talk you know, all kinds of ways, but I do that for a living. So it's like, I don't really <laughs> want to go into that uh, avenue of speaking properly, speaking great etiquette, uh, being like a radio, not a radio host, but a talk show host where you have to not cuss. So you, you know, you have to be very aware of your surroundings and the uh, uh, market audience you're trying to reach. So I'm like, okay, I see, Ken. I see you moving in silence, but don't keep the game, girl. And I'm like, do you, honey? Do you? I know you probably want a, your own talk show. <laughs> or, you know, you maybe you want something like uh, Michael Strands and what Kiki Palmer is involved with because that is something lucrative. And if it goes into syndication, that's money, 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 money. So I ain't mad at you, girl. I am not mad at you. But I'm saying I'm peeping game. I'm peeping game. And with you at your age now, girl, yes, you probably could retire before retirement. But let me just tell you this. Make sure you're paying into Social Security so you can not only be getting your bag as you go through different ventures throughout your lifetime as you're getting older towards retirement, you can also get that Social Security check. Okay? So I'm just putting you out. 
put you out on gang girl. Continue to get that and keep continue to get it from the government. Okay. But anyway. Yes, but let's get on back into the story. I just want to let y'all know if y'all had the forethought to see and read between the lines while Candace doing her little thing on Real Housewives of Lamb. She's trying to forge ahead and get on television uh, uh, for something else. And I, like I said, I ain't mad at her. I'm proud of her, really. Go on and do your thing, honey. You don't have to be like Nene and the rest of the uh, ladies. Well, y'all are pretty young. Nene is probably the oldest one uh, as her being the OG. Kim, Zosia, she's no longer on the show, but she has her little thing going on. And... Um, I don't, know, I don't know what Lisa Wu doing these days, but they, like I said, it's neither here nor there, but these was the OGs that first started it that were a little older, and Cynthia and Nene are in their 50s and stuff, so yeah, Candy's in her 30s, I think she's in her 30s, maybe late 30s, but anyway, she's doing her thing, so yes, yeah, she can be a multi-millionaire, if not billionaire, before she hits 60, and still be trying to make money, okay? Huh, so, yes, proud of that girl. Okay, but those are the uh, accolades I have for her. Now we got questions. <laughs> and we need answers, baby. But like I said, um, is Kenya Moore trying to use you for taping purposes? It, has her time run out with her and Cynthia? Because I see as the upcoming episode, my girl, is out there trying to tell Cynthia or talk to Cynthia like she's somebody's child or she's somebody's mother to Cynthia. I like I, I think Cynthia still have a, a living, breathing mother and where you coming from her telling her to hush up, don't talk and all this, that's just downright disrespectful. Uh can you especially when you're saying she is your friend, but you kinda of feeling some kind of way about Cynthia anyway, because she didn't take up for you or stand up for you when Eva was talking noise behind your back. So she's still kind of feeling some kind of salty way on that front and she's taking it out on you up loud and in color. Okay, and lies on the real housewives of Atlanta. Your co star is cutting up on you, Cynthia. But yet I ain't seeing you really get back with her because how you going back and forth with her, you acting like y'all in elementary school and you're, you know, saying this and that and this and that, but nothing is like making a real firm, like, I got you now, stop talking type of statement. So, like I said, it was just a brief, shortcut version what they showed us, y'all on somebody's balcony or what outside of somebody's house in the backyard it seems like it or maybe y'all at a restaurant or something but just has an outdoorsy feel and can you trying to get in your ass and Cynthia sitting up there time out you know trying to boss back up better but like I said Cynthia has to grow on me with this newfound speaking up for yourself because it just all looks just disorganized <laughs> you know what I'm saying because if you ain't never took up for yourself and you start to come out trying to take up for yourself. It, I don't know. It's just like a, it has to grow on people. You know, we have to really see you stand firm and walk the talk on a daily basis and not for a little few scenes here and there when you're taping. OK, because, you know, your boyfriend told us you were going to be this new person that come out. So he almost really tainted you in my eyes because see, I was already expecting you to come out like you some powerhouse get somebody together type of female when you ain't never been that on not now season of the Real Housewives of Atlanta. You just coming out trying to show your ass now on season 12 and it's not working. Maybe we go through this season and maybe a couple more seasons down the road. It will foster on me that you have definitely grown into this new skin you're trying to be in, Cynthia. But, you know, I was just trying to figure out, Candy, what's going on? Because <laughs> y'all are the three of us Muscatel at the Sigrun's party trying to bring Kenya back into fruition on the show, which I did uh, achieve that feat. But it's like, okay, girl, what's going on? Now she's trying to hang with you and Todd, and it's really more so Mark and Todd, I believe, is hanging out and, and liking each other's company and this, that, and the third. And uh, Kenya just trying to pull you in now, but Kenya wasn't telling nobody nothing about her relationship, not even you, can. She didn't tell you she would get married uh, along with the rest of the crew on the show. And she really didn't say anything uh, about an idea type treatment she was seeking. Oh, that's just because she was just a little more. Now she wants to clue you in, Candy, about all this. You trying to co-sign with her? Honey, like I said. 
Continue to move in silence. But don't let Kenya hook you into something where we're going to be looking at you like, Candy girl, what is Cynthia? I mean, what is uh, Kenya trying to pull you into, honey? What is OG Kenya trying to pull you into? Because you've been doing fine all by yourself. <laughs> you don't need no more highlights to be forging up a relationship with her that is pure fake. Because we, if we look at Kenya's... Uh, M.O., who has she been longevity friends with on the show since she started? Let me tell you, nobody. She's been her, herself, was it me, myself, and I? Uh, yes. She, she, and she, that's who she's been with all along. And I don't see it changing anytime soon. So watch out, can y'all? I mean, what Candy, watch out for the other K, okay? Um... Why didn't Kenya invite you to her, uh, I guess, coming out party when she finally knew that she was going to be pregnant? I think she only told Cynthia. Uh, and I'm trying to figure out if y'all were so close during all of this time period. She's trying to loop you in. Why didn't you know about that? So I'm just saying, you know, slow your roll on loving, liking and being in Kenya's corner because, you know, like I said, she made a statement a good while ago when I was doing some reviews on you and what well, Real Housewives of Atlanta period. And she was trying to blast you out, just trying to get back at Nene, you know, trying to pour salt on Nene's womb that was open a little bit about now nah, Nene, she might be the OG on the show, but Candy made more money than her. Candy is the one that's the uh, top biller for the show. Candy. You know, I'm like, girl, why don't you just go on to sing the song? Candy, girl. Or it's just like candy. Candy. You know, cameo. But, uh-uh. Kenya got some of her sleeve, honey. So, beware. Watch out. And forward to here. If you have to continue going in alone on the show, be nice and cordial to your co-workers. But don't be trying to solidify that. I'm sure you got your own realm of friends that you deal with on a daily basis. You tell your innermost secrets to. Keep it that way. Cause it ain't really came out on you. Except for the thing where uh, Todd was calling himself out in the streets. It's all allegedly that he was me coming out of a, a, a hotel downtown somewhere. And you weren't the partaker of anything. <laughs> but if I know Mama George raised you well, you probably already know about that incident. It just hit the streets for bad publicity on Todd, not you. Because you got your prenup signed. You got your prenup signed, girl. So I ain't mad at you. I don't care what Todd Tucker do out in them streets. Because we already know Candy got the prenup, prenup in my Kanye West voice, okay? We want prenup. We want prenup. Okay. But, um, I, I, you know, I'm trying to figure out this little thing with you and Ace and, and the new baby coming and Todd Tucker calling himself want to call the shots. Now, I know you're trying to throw salt on your name. And you're going to let him go as far as you can because, like they say, you pay for men. And I ain't got nothing wrong with that either, can Because if you got it, you only have a certain amount you're going to give from each month that you feel he deserves because he's not really doing anything. And you don't want anybody to get on him for not providing, for not doing something. I understand it. Yeah, break him off something every month to keep him like he is doing some industries. Because we all see him. He's with you. It's like he's your bodyguard, your uh, entrepreneur, not entrepreneur, uh, entourage type person, and your party animal. So, hey, if you like him around you 24-7, go ahead. Do your thing, girl. Okay, at least... You know where he at. <laughs> and when you don't know who, where he at, I'm sure you got your investigators clocking his teeth. Because when it's time to say, bye-bye, little black bird, you have all the evidence you need to solidify it in court. You go, He go on his way. You go on your way. Y'all co-parents. So I, I'm there for you, Ken. I see you, girl. I see you. But, uh, yes, you did make it plain as Jane, known to the world. That you'll give Todd a, 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 a long rope to hang itself, but you ain't no fool. Your mama didn't raise no fool, and you are not a fool, okay? You could play the fool in people's eyes, but uh, quiet as it's kept, you ain't nobody's fool. <laughs> and I'm with it, girl. I am with it. So we're going to let him think he's raising the baby. Is he doing this? Is he doing that? Because technically, if you do have a man in your life, and it seems like 
Todd is a stand-up guy when it comes to raising baby Ace. I can't really say about Kayla because, you know, we didn't have that background information. It wasn't shown on TV. So I can probably say his mother did a very, her mother did a very good job in raising her because she seems like a nice young lady. Um, now, with Todd has been in the life, therefore, can't really say. Uh, but like I said, if there's anything where he was with or around the area where she lived, I'm sure he was in her life. Because uh, he does adore little baby Ace. I can see it in his demeanor with the boy. You know, he loves that boy. That's his little man. That's his ace, okay? So, you know, when you have a father or a dad in, in their uh, lives, it's, it's good to let them learn from another man. Now, what he would teach them about women and all that, I, I don't know because, see, he had his daughter in a strip club, so it's kind of questionable, okay? But I know he would see the nurturing side and the mothering side and the instillment of good through Candy's eyes, so... You know, Mama Joyce did a very good job with that. And Candy has definitely been blessed to have that um, foresight to make sure her children are good and they're safe and they're happy. And I see that all in Riley when it comes to her expression she has with her mom when they're not talking about Todd or his dealings or anything like that. She's very, she's a very respectful child as well. So I can say nothing but good things like Candy. And Candy had uh, good people around her when she wasn't at home to be able to, you know, do what she do uh, professionally and providing for her family. So that's a good thing. So I'm just going to say, hey, Candy girl, continue to do what you do. Continue to watch out <laughs> for Mr. Todd Tucker and his somewhat philandering ways here and there. But then again, I kind of have to blame you because that pair of, uh, what do you call it? Your Dora's box is open, and you have all this stuff going here and there. Even though you did say on national TV, you know, you ain't like, I ain't, you ain't put no names out there, but we kind of figured that you were talking about Tiny and T.I. and how she let T.I. go and do whatever he wanted to do, say what he wanted to do. You ain't that kind of chick. <laughs> so I'm like, go ahead, girl. If you open that Pandora's box where you having people come into y'all situation, even though you're party to it. But what about when he want to go do things? you know, behind your back and sneak and get a little peek by itself, you know, a little feeling touch of him. But uh, like I said, you got it going on. You will work it out. I know you're not going to be one of them women that be sitting out there crying and hollering on TV and showing, you know, uh, the weak side. You're going to come and mourn in private and you're going to be a boss chick in the public. Eye. And that's what you need to be on these reality shows. You don't need to show no weakness. Uh-uh. No, 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 no. But I would like to know if you were really wanting to tell us. You said you had a hard year. Now, I know Mama Sharon was living, Todd's mother at the time. And I know you did have a hard year if you had to go between them two, Mama Joyce and Mama Sharon. Woo, Lord, we saw it on TV, girl. Woo, I'm like, oh, Lord, help, Ken. Because <laughs> somebody going to get hurt between them two mothers, okay? Because they both are go-getters. They both love their children, and they look like they could go in the ring somewhere and go toe-to-toe. -to -toe. Then you're going to always have Todd taking up for his mom, and what she's saying this and third, and then he's going to be coming at your mom, and then you're going to be taking up for Mama Joyce, and then she's going to be going over there talking about Todd and his mom. So, yeah, woo, child, I can see it. And if we're talking strictly about that, yeah, you did have a hard year, baby. <laughs> you did have a hard year. But, uh... I did want to say, I don't know how close you are to Kayla's mom or whatnot, and I'm pretty sure, and I'm just assuming, you know, I hate to assume, but I'm just going on what I'm getting, because if, um, Kayla's mom was in the entertainment business, or she was well out there, I'm pretty sure Todd would have been running a pudgery skirt, too, trying to get on or whatnot, or, or show his, uh, well, it wasn't his wife at the time, it was his girlfriend. But then again, maybe like I said, she don't want to be in the hoopla. She don't want nobody in her, pri her private business and looking her up and being paparazzi and all like that. So I can understand. But I, if I was Candy, I probably would have talked with her and asked her, could I provide this gift for her, you know, for her future? You know, just look at it from, you know, if you died or anything, you know, I got your baby girl because I'm married to, you know, uh, your baby daddy's uh you know, man or whatnot, however you look at it. 
And I would have, you know, said, hey, Qatar ain't finna tell me what to do with my money, okay? Especially if I'm sitting on live TV and you got people out here saying this, that, and that. Why you ain't doing it for Kayla? Why you ain't doing it? You know what I'm saying? Since it's done in public half the time, I would have did the shit in public. Like, okay, yeah, I set Kayla up. I put it in her bank account from me to her, okay? You got something to deal with it? You you, you talk about, you talk to to yourself. Cause hell, this is money I made it, you did and I'll be like, right, right, <laughs> we out of here. Yes, I'll be like Bobby Brown and Ted, okay? Telling him, you ain't going to tell me about my, uh, well, I'm going to say adopted daughter, but my, you know, my uh, my stepdaughter or daughter, however I came to look at the child. I would say, uh-uh, I made this money, you did, okay? So I'm putting a, a, a account in her name and her mother knows about it. You know about it, and uh, Kayla knows about it. She fall on hard times, she can have that money. Compliments of her stepmom, or however Kayla sees her in that realm. And that's it. That's that's how that would have been shut down. You ain't going to tell me what to do, because you ain't going to tell me what to do with these other two. We haven't taken out, but okay, I will have my say. Because <laughs> I don't want birth ace in this world, honey. I bore those pains. And we had a surrogate with the other one. Well, hell, it's still with my egg, okay? Your sperm, so we got 50 50 on how we going to raise this child. Okay, and it's a girl, too. Now, you know everybody be on her. And Todd, if he uh, took baby girl Blaze up in a strip club. <laughs> Hell, Mama Joyce wouldn't even, she would have been at the strip club dragging baby Blaze out and cussing uh, Todd out. Okay. But that's all I had on Ken. I, I kind of stretched it a little longer than I anticipated doing. Uh, but like I said, she's doing a wonderful job. Continue to do you, Ken, and continue to do you. I ain't got no fault in nothing you've done. And really, nothing, really. Uh, you know, self for that phase incident, but you know, it, it's questionable, and I can see your point fully. If it was done to me, I probably did the same. I don't think I would have made no money off of it. I might mean, have sold some t shirts or some of that nature, but you know, you're a sexual provocative person, so I can see how you would spin that into your already business adventure you got going on and making you more money on top of more money on top of more money, okay. Because you do give it back to the community and you do lavish your family with a lot of gifts. So I ain't got them, but uh, good things and good thoughts wishing you wishing towards your way. And maybe you continue to prosper. But that's all I had on Miss Canterbury's Tucker. She keep doing her thing. I keep doing my thing over here. And we'll keep entertaining you on both platforms, okay? But uh Get down in the comments. Tell me what y'all thought about uh, about the subject matter at hand. And I will see you guys next video. And uh, like I said, I won't be doing any videotaping uh, once you wake up in the morning. Whoever wakes up at 7 or 8 o'clock in the morning on each given day. But have a beautiful, blessed, relaxing Thanksgiving. And don't let nobody upset you. Hell, it's the holiday. And for some of us, it's the long weekend, okay? The long weekend, baby. Enjoy, be safe, and I'll see you next video. And happy Thanksgiving once again. Bye-bye.